Guys, you know how frustrating it is when you have a killer app idea, but turning it into reality feels like climbing Mount Everest. You start setting up the backend, dealing with databases, fixing deployment pipelines, and suddenly days turn into weeks. And most AI tools out there, yeah, they make a nice looking front end. But when it comes to the real backend work, they just leave you hanging. Think about tools like Loverville, Cursor, Bolt. They are great for certain parts of the job, like quick prototyping or generating small pieces of code. But they can't give you a fully working, production-ready app. But if you need proper backend services, scalable APIs, and a smooth deployment to your own cloud, that's where Leap.new changes the game. This isn't just another AI coding tool. It's like having your own personal developer that builds the whole thing for you. I'm talking about backend architecture, databases, microservices, cloud setup, all ready to go and deployed straight to your AWS or Google Cloud. No vendor locks in, no hub back projects, just real apps ready for real users. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how it works. We will take an idea and turn it into a fully working live app in minutes. Everything from image uploads to complex API integrations. Trust me, lib.new isn't just here to help you code, it's here to do the heavy lifting for you. Let's jump in. So here is the thing. When you open the lib.new dashboard, it straight up tells you we are not just another prototyping tool. That means it's not here to just show you a pretty demo or some fake design. lib.new actually builds real functional apps with the proper backend, working APIs, and all the tech stuff that makes an app truly work. And the coolest part, it can directly deploy your app to your own cloud, so you end up with a ready-to-use live project, not just a concept. The box right here is where you type in your prompt. Basically, you just tell it what you want to build. Once you are done, uh, you just hit the send button, and boom, it starts working on it. Now, there is also the little surprise me button. If you click it, it throws out random app ideas and suggestions, which is actually pretty fun uh, if you are just exploring or stuck for inspiration. And here's the cool part. You can even connect your own database directly from here. Then you can see powered by anchor.ts. So Leap is built on something called anchor.ts. And trust me, this is where the real magic happens. It's an open source framework designed for building big complex systems but it makes the process feel way less painful with it you get super fast apis that use rust under the hood for speed and safety automatic setup of all your cloud stuff and aws or google cloud so you don't have to click around dashboards all day okay it even has built-in tools to track performance and errors so you know exactly what's going on in your app all the time in short, Anchor.ts handles uh, all the hard boring infrastructure work so the apps Leap creates are ready for real world use from day one, okay? After that, you can see all the integrations it offers like Stripe for payments, GitHub for code management and more. This is super useful because you can directly plug these into your app without setting them up from scratch. Then it even gives you a comparison with other similar tools like Loverville, v and Bolt. So you can see what makes Leap different or better. And over here, there are some templates made by the community. Basically, ready-made app setups you can start with. We will check those out later. But the idea is you don't always have to start from zero. You can pick a template, tweak it, and have something working in no time, okay? All right, in this video, I'm going to build a super simple but really useful project an image upload and storage service using Leap. Basically, we will create a system where users can upload an image and once it's uploaded, they will instantly get a public link that they can share with anyone. All the images will be stored safely in an object storage service, kind of like Amazon S3. So they are not sitting on your computer, but on a secure cloud server. And to make it even cooler, we will add a feature that lets you see all the images that have been uploaded before. This project is perfect to show how Lib can handle file uploads, connect to external storage, and give you ready-to-use APIs without you writing tons of backend codes, right? So for that, my initial prompt will be this. Build an image upload service. Users should be able to upload an image, get a public URL for the uploaded image. 
store the images in an object store bucket. Now I will hit send. So basically once we run this, lib.new is gonna build an API for us that can handle image uploads. So if someone uploads a picture, it will automatically store it in a storage bucket, kind of like a cloud folder. Then it gives us a public link for that image so anyone can view it. And the cool part is it will also show us an architecture diagram so we can actually see how this storage is connected to our project. As you can see, it's already started writing the code for us. Now while it's busy doing that, I will take a moment to explain everything step by step so you don't have any confusion later, okay? After that, we will see what it has created for us. Over on the left panel, you will find the change history section. This is like your project's timeline. It keeps track of all the updates and edits made over time. Normally, you would see a list of uh, complicated changes here that have been merged into your main project. But in our case right now, it says no closed changes, which just means we haven't finalized or merged any updates yet. Right here, you will see the ongoing change section. This is basically the set of updates lib.new is currently working on based on your most recent request. Then we have the discard change option. This is basically your undo everything button for the current ongoing change. If the AI's edits don't match what you wanted or you feel like the direction isn't right, you can simply discard it. This will throw away all the changes you just made and take you back to the last saved version of your project. Next, there is the merge change option. This is like telling the AI, yep, these changes look good, let's lock them in. It saves your current ongoing change into the project's history. The idea is to merge often so you have clear save points to go back to if needed. And it also helps keep the AI focused on the latest version of your project, okay? Next is the scope context option. This is like telling lib.new, hey, only look here. You can pick exactly which files or folders the AI should focus on for next prompt. This is super useful if you're working on a big project because instead of the AI scanning through everything, it will only pay attention to the parts that actually matter, okay? That way you save time, avoid unnecessary changes and keep the AI uh, laser focused on what you need. Then we have the auto fix option which is currently turned on. This basically means lib.new will automatically try to fix errors or even improve your code without you having to ask. It's a big time saver if you just want quick updates or minor tweaks done instantly. Right next to that you will see the GPT-5 level. This shows which AI model is actually writing your code. In this case it's set to GPT-5. This is where is the main workspace. The place uh, where you will actually see and work with your app's code. But it's not just about writing code. You can also explore all uh, sorts of information about your project right from here. If you look at the tabs at the top, code, preview, architecture, infrastructure, service, catalog. These are like different sections of your workspace. Each one gives you a different view of your app. Okay, Let's break down what each of these tabs does. First, we have the code. This is where you will see the actual uh, source code that lib.new has created or updated for you. Then there is preview. Think of it like a live demo. It lets you interact with your app and test how it works without ever leaving lib.new. Okay. Next is architecture. This one's pretty cool. It gives you a live visual diagrams of your app structure, showing all the moving parts like services, databases, and integrations. It's basically a map of how everything connects and then we have the infrastructure here you get a clear view of all the cloud resources your app is using lib.new handles all the complicated setup behind the scenes so you can focus on easily uh, managing the important parts of your deployed system without getting lost in technical headaches now let's talk about the secret section this is basically where uh, you store all your super sensitive details, things like API keys, database password, or special, you know, settings that you never want written directly into your code. Why? Because if you put them in your code, they could end up in your version control like GitHub and anyone could see them. That's a big no-no for security. Next, we have the external databases section. Think of this as a way to connect your lib.new app to a database um, that you already have somewhere else. Now, why is this useful? Well, 
lib.new can totally create and manage databases for you but sometimes you might already have one uh, set up or maybe you prefer to manage it yourself this section gives you the flexibility to hook up those existing databases to your app without having to move uh, everything over okay now let's look at the compute section this is basically the engine room of your app the backend computing power that runs all your apps logic in technical terms these are microservers if you see the status marked as running that's a good sign it means your backend services are live deployed and working just fine next we have the object storage section you can think of this as your app's digital warehouse it's where all your files like images videos or documents are stored here you will see the bucket name which in our case is images this is the storage bucket lib.new set up for us automatically exactly as we mentioned in our initial prompt now let's talk about the databases section uh, this is where lib.new I and mean, then through anchor sets up and manages your apps databases for you automatically and the best part you don't have to manually install configure or update anything anchor handles everything from creating the database updating its structure when needed that's called migrations to making regular backups so your data stays safe next up is pub class sub which stands for publish and subscribe this is all about event driven communication in your app now let's talk about corn jobs and this is basically your automation tool for anything that needs to run on a fixed schedule think of it like setting alarm for your app whether it's running daily backups sending out a scheduled reports or cleaning up old files at midnight once you set it up it will run automatically without you having to press any buttons or remember to do it so to wrap it up the infrastructure tab in lib.new gives you a complete view of all the cloud resources your app is using whether it's databases event systems storage or automation so you will know exactly what's running and how everything connects okay next up is the service catalog this is like the master list of everything your app can do it shows all the services you have built and the endpoints they offer basically the different doors through which other apps or users can interact with your system at the bottom you will see three really useful tabs build logs and tests build shows you exactly what happened when lib.new tried to build your app including any errors or warnings so you know if something went wrong logs let you watch your app's live activity in real time it's like a behind the scenes feed showing what your app is doing which is super handy when you are trying to figure out why something isn't working okay tests show you the results from automated tests whether they were generated by lib.new or once you wrote yourself so you can quickly confirm if everything is working the way it should so i have explained everything to you step by step and i hope by now you have got a clear idea of how it all works now let's take a look at the image uploading website it has created for us and see exactly what it looks like and how it functions i'm going to click on the preview and see what kind of image uploading services it has created for us and wow this actually looks pretty nice okay great let's open it in a new tab and check it out looks great so far here we have an option to upload an image so let's go ahead and try uploading one to see if it works i will just select an image and upload it and yes it's working the image is uploading successfully you can see it here it says uploaded images one and right here we have a public link i can copy this link also i can open this link on a new tab um, just look at that the image has opened perfectly the best part is that this overall works with just a single prompt in some you know other tools you have to give multiple prompts to get everything working but here it's all set up in one go which is amazing let's go back and try uploading one more image and yes that one worked too so we have already built the basic image uploading service now i want to make it even more useful by adding a new feature the ability to list all the images that have been uploaded so far basically i will be adding an endpoint to our service that can fetch and display the urls of every image stored in our system this way instead of just uploading files we can also view everything 
uh, that's already there. Uh, for that, my prompt will be this. Add an endpoint to the image upload service that lists all previously uploaded image URLs. Before I send this prompt, I will uh, first merge all the changes. Alright, now I will send it. As soon as I do that, it starts working on the task. According to the prompt, it's going to rewrite the code. Okay, look at this. It seems like the update is complete. See here, the two images we uploaded earlier are now automatically showing up. Let's open it in a new tab. And even I refresh it, both images are still there. Looks great. Alright, let's try uploading one more image. And look at this, it now says uploaded images 3. Amazing, everything is working perfectly. Now I'm going to go ahead and deploy it. So once you click on deploy, you will land on this screen. And this is basically the control center for taking your app live so others can actually use it. You will see two main options here. The first is the staging section, which is perfect if you just want to quickly test or share your app with Anchor Cloud Hosting. All you need to do is hit deploy and in seconds you will have a live URL ready to go. Completely free, okay? The second option is connect cloud which lets you link your own AWS or Google Cloud account. Uh, this is more for uh, when you want full control and host your app on your own infrastructure. So I'm going to deploy this on Anchor Cloud Hosting itself. This might take a little bit of time. Alright, look at this, it's done. And it has also given me a shareable link. Now I can share this link with anyone I want, okay? Alright, so everything is set up and working perfectly. We built the image uploading service, added the feature to list all uploaded images, and even deployed it with a shareable link. Pretty cool, right? If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.